Hey, so we just did like our basic information about how the interface works. And now we're going to build a little contrasting node that Andrew already showed off in his presentation. And just to give you a little context of how this works. So I already defined my output for the button object, so element. And then down here in my code, I just have the button style and I have a simple button here. Let's add our CSS map to it, right? So we know we want to expose all the values of this component or actually element. And we're going to make it a bit bigger. So I'm just adding a constant here where we say uh, 20 pixel, oops, 20 pixels. And I'm going to assign that to our font size. So we have a big button and let's assign it to our padding too. So we know that we see something in our demo. Yeah, cool. Okay, a really ugly button that helps us to understand color. So we're going to create a dynamic color here. The color node is generate color, for example, and I always love to use HSL um, for this. And let's give it three generic slide inputs. So we start with our hue, 360, 100, and one, whoops, not 001, 100 here. And now I just need to connect them to my inputs, H, S, and L, and then let's generate a color. Great. So let's move it to something, yeah, minty. And I already have my output color, so now I can connect this to my CSS background. And the button already has a good color. But you can see the contrast is not really good, right? It doesn't adjust to what we give it. So let's actually add a token set here with a white and black token. So you can just drag and drop JSON files with existing tokens in there. Each set also has the download or copy paste function, so you can just take this. And now we need the logics on top of it. So I'm just here to add an accessibility node, which is the contrast. I'm gonna do two contrast. Oh, and there I can already check my absolute here. Give it my background color, which I know is this one here. And there's another background. And then I'm giving my foreground color into it. Oh, that was wrong. We want the black one down here, right? So now I know the contrast 62 and 46. Now, how do I process this information? We just add some logics. So we do a comparison and we see which one of them is bigger. So is A bigger or is B bigger? So A is the bigger one, that means the output is true. So we can actually add our if statement below. Where if it's true, I'm going to take white. And if it's false, I'm going to take black. And now I'm able to add this to my color. And we are in a horrible position where like our contrast is really, really weird. But now if I just change, for example, my luminosity, you can see how the contrast actually defines what color is on top. You will still run into the issue of having not sufficient contrast, but at least you're like on the more contrasting side um, if you use this method. Yeah, so that's a little introduction to logic. You can see like its small little graph already gives you quite the logic underneath. And yeah, if you have any questions, just ping us.